So welcome to PE Power. Talking turbos today, very specifically uh, VNT turbos or VGT. We'll come to the differences in a second. Uh, this is partially also a sort of response video, which I don't do, I don't ever really want to do, but there was a great video put on about general turbochargers on uh, Mighty Car Mod's second channel um, under the sort of theme of, of the skid factory. So go and have a look at that. I'll put the link down the bottom uh, down in the description. Please go and see that because that talks about general turbochargers. Turbo Yoda and skid factory, I love what they do. I really do. love watching their stuff and I've to be honest, learnt stuff from them as well. Uh, however, when he started talking about VNTs, I was quite surprised how um, his knowledge wasn't very good. He mentioned a few things that were wrong, so let's go through the basics of a VNT and a VGT and how it works. So here is your, essentially your turbocharger. So uh, here you have uh, your turbine side. Um, this is the wheel that gets pushed by exhaust gases and temperature, that's quite important as well. It goes in here, comes out there. Wasted exhaust gases effectively, and it turns the turbine, which sits in there. And that's connected by a shaft, which is lubricated and cooled in the center here by oil and water on this one. And then uh, here we have the compressor wheel. So compressor wheel spins, obviously, relative to the turbine speed. This compresses the air creates boost. Okay, simple enough. Um, as diesels progressed, technology progressed, people wanted uh, more power. They could rev diesels higher in a general sort of um, production vehicle and in trucks as well, but also they still wanted the low down responsiveness, the drivability. Uh, now, turbo technology developed further and got better, uh, but Garrett and amongst others started creating the VNT turbo, which stands for a variable nozzle turbo you also get a variable geometry turbo. They are actually done slightly differently in the slightly old technology. This is a VNT. Now Garrett, I'll just briefly go through the Garrett series. Uh, Garrett has sort of first series was GT and then a few numbers denoting the size um, of the wheels and the casings and the frames, etc. Uh, and then just a V on the end, that denoted it was a VNT, their first generation. Gone through a few more now and they seem to just use a letter at the end of GT now. So it was a GTA, GTB, GTC, etc. They're now onto GTDs, they're in your latest production vehicles, you'll buy your BMW Mercedes. This particular one is a favourite of mine, um, I don't really know if you can see that there, but it's a GTB 2056 VL, or VLK to be really specific. Um, it's a favourite of mine, run it on the racetrack to run it on the Lemon, um, very available, creates great power, and it's actually not that big, it's, it's a nice sort of compressed unit really. Uh, traditionally it actually uses an electronic controller, which they didn't in the early days, they just used a vacuum actuated controller, which acts on a lever here, which moves the nozzles, variable nozzle turbo. The nozzles work on the hot side, on the turbine side of the housing. Now, I'll just switch to a video now and I'll show you uh, these vanes working. So here we have a VNT a turbocharger with the housing on the hot side removed, so that we can see the vanes or nozzles moving to, from the open to the closed position. So let's see that again, and in basic terms, let's just briefly, very basically, briefly discuss what's going on. In layman's terms, these veins work a little bit like your finger over the end of a hose pipe. The water flow might be very low, but you can get the pressure up by sticking your finger over the end of it. So basically, these nozzles here, in the opposite direction to as Turbo Yoda explained, they close down at low RPM, or when you put your foot right down, to get the pressure in the manifold, the pressure thus against the turbine increasing. This spins up the turbine faster. Once the airflow is enough in the engine and exhaust manifold to keep the turbo spinning, those vanes open up and just let the turbo operate as it would normally. Very simple, but they work completely differently to as Turbo Yoda explained. Closed position increases boost, open position effectively decreases or reduces the boost increasing. So there we have it, pretty simple. Sorry for the jerkiness, it's because I've slowed the video down so much. So you've seen those nozzles moving, um, and um, as highlighted, yet yeah, Turbo Yoda got it a little bit wrong. Those nozzles actually work differently to as he described. So as the nozzles close up, it creates more pressure, and this turns the turbine even faster. And then once you've reached that sort of speed that you need, i.e. boost pressure, but the speed you need inside, um, then it can then wind those out and you get the flow you need at high RPM because of course with those nozzles tightened down you're creating a lot of back pressure and that effectively throttles back or chokes the uh, the engine. So you don't want that obviously in high RPM so then they open up the flow is enough that you don't need to close those nozzles down. 
There are great benefits to this, and despite what he said in that video, these far surpass wastegated turbochargers on their own. Now, uh, some modern stuff, they've been using two wastegate turbochargers in compound effect or twin turbo. Obviously that has their own advantages and it is slightly simpler than with the vanes. But these far surpass it. So of the same generation of turbo, i.e. the same year, same manufacturer, same design peer of time, uh, a wastegate versus one of these on a turbocharged diesel engine, these will just blow them out of the water. Incredibly efficient and just create so much power low down and keep the flow up high RPM. So unless you're replacing um, a very old version of one of these VNTs with a very brand new latest wastegate turbocharger, um, then really these are a good upgrade. He talks about them being uh, very easy to control but very complicated mechanically. Well actually I do disagree with that. Mechanically as you've just seen in the video they're actually very simple. To control they're a little bit trickier. So this is a vacuum actuator that I've put on here to make the sim thing a bit, things a bit simpler. Um, later ones had a, a electronic control on them. Um, this gives a feedback and basically inside one of these things is just a motor on one side uh, with a little wheel that senses and gives it feedback in the circuit, which is pretty cool. So you can do some funky things with those. But we just use a vacuum actuated controller as opposed to your wastegated turbo, which works on boost pressure. So the boost opens the wastegate once it reaches your optimum boost level um, or you hold it closed until you reach it. This kind of works in the opposite direction, but it's controlled by um, a little electronic actuator which allows a certain amount of vacuum to work on this. Um, it's basically, if you've ever looked at your solenoids in your engine bay that control uh, a modern car with a turbo, it's a little solenoid with a couple of pipes coming out of the electronic plug. It's also the thing that controls your EGR, same basically system. Um, just does different things, obviously. So actually, it's quite tricky to control these correctly so that the EMPs, EGTs aren't high when you're cruising and that you're not getting boost spikes. Uh, so it's quite some fine tuning to get these right. And ECUs these days do make that obviously a darn sight easier. These do run in a bit of a sweet spot, which is why the controlling is a bit tricky. But if you manage to control them in their sweet spot, they are incredible. VNT versus VGT. So a VNT is a variable nozzle turbo. We also call them vanes sometimes. You saw on that little video just now, we're showing you that the vanes or nozzles moving and opening and shutting. The variable geometry ones, it could cover these as well, but some early ones were called VGTs because uh, basically there was a sleeve that went over the turbine side. So you can imagine that the fans spinning and there's a sleeve that covers some of the turbine some of the time. Um, those weren't that great and aren't really used today. Um, I'm sure they're used in American trucks still etc. People are going to comment on that now. Um, as with all things with turbochargers and opinions on cars. Um, but they were superseded pretty much with the nozzle turbo. It was more finely controlled, had less issues, um, just worked better really, a more fine design. They are designed well, these, 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 as I say, even in an OEM application, have to deal with some quite high exhaust temperatures. Um, you know, six or seven hundred degrees isn't uncommon, and in tune values, a lot higher than that. And they do withstand it. Of course, these do fail. Uh, this particular one is... Um, the bearings are just oil filled bearings, they're not ball bearing. There are later ones that are ball bearing or the same series as this but a big one is ball bearing. And you have to be careful the oil pressures on them sometimes um, and make sure the seals are good. Like any turbo though really, that's no different. Um, the other problem is, is when people are trying to control them, some people just sort of a little bit whimsical about how they control them, just let them boost up to 40-50 psi. Well these little puppies don't really like that. As do most turbos, to be honest. It's just certain types of turbos sort of can withstand that for a little bit longer than these. These don't like it. They'll just chuckle their guts out the uh, out the front end and through your engine, which isn't very good. So that really kind of covers um, very quickly and very excitedly just VNT turbos. I love these things. They're incredibly efficient. Um, I use that word a lot. Now, Turbo Yoda wasn't far off in, in saying, you know, what he said about the other turbochargers, but I would contest him to a challenge about information about these. Of course, I don't know everything about these. I'm sure people will correct me even on this video. Please feel free to comment, query, and question uh, down below, as I'm sure you will. The turbos, which were once this size and wastegated for a turbo diesel, uh, have now been almost halved in size with the nozzle. Uh, application on this side. Now the exhaust housing is a bit bigger because of having to house that but actually it is more compact and it's incredible that you can get the same amount of power going through a much smaller turbocharger which has many many benefits. Uh, please do your own research if you're going to size up one of these things for your car but please look into it, don't just disregard them. Uh, they are 
very simple mechanically. They can be reliable if you plumb them up correctly and size them correctly for your car and control them correctly. There's hundreds of these things out there to buy just on eBay and they will do very well. Please see that video down below for the Skid Factory. There's two videos up there now that they've put about turbochargers. Um, just keep in mind those few little details I had about VNTs, um, the way they work. So thanks for watching to this point. Please see my other videos. I've got some other guides and stuff, some other stuff about this being used, and general turbo-y, diesel-y French stuff. There's some other bits too. Thanks for watching.